Hello there, I'm Nick Hart, Farlow's Fishing Manager, and welcome to this, the third in a series of beginner's guides all about fly lines. Now last time we had a little look at floating fly lines and we learned about tapers. If you haven't seen those videos, maybe go back and have a check over those. But if you have seen them, and if you're looking to fish subsurface, then this video is just for you. It's a steaming hot day today on this small still water, so we're taking a boat out, and we're gonna go and learn all about intermediate fly lines, poly leaders, and how to fish subsurface. So we're out here in the middle of the lake now, uh, but before we set off, I've made sure that I've got one of these, all important on a boat, uh, actually a waistcoat with a life jacket inbuilt. A hat and sunglasses are always super important when you're fly fishing. And when you've got such bright, hot conditions, it's so easy to get dehydrated out here. So I've got a bottle of water with me. Uh, I've also made sure that I've put plenty of sunscreen on and covered a, a lot of myself up. I can use something like this to help with that, especially your neck. When you're out on a, a day like this, the water is actually reflecting that sunlight at you. So you can get very, very hot. So just really important, stay hydrated, make sure you've got your sunblock on, and of course, have something like a life jacket. So once you got the health and safety out of the way, we want to start fishing. Now these are hardly what we would call prime trout fishing conditions. Normally we want something sort of like overcast weather and uh, maybe muggy warm, plenty of flies coming off. Got plenty of damsels around here today, but it's absolutely flat calm. And although I'm seeing the odd fish moving, there's not that many. So today's all about going down a little bit. What I'm going to start with is a really good way for somebody kind of thinking about this for the first time. It's called a poly leader. And all this is, and people get very confused by them, all it is is an extra attachment that you can buy very inexpensively to go on the end of your fly line. Think of it really as a, a sink tip that you can interchange. So you can fish with your floating fly line that we had a little look at in uh, episode two of this series. Fish with that floating fly line, but if you want to get a little bit deeper, we add one of these and I can show you how to do that. It's just a very simple thing called a loop to loop. We add one of these poly leaders onto the end and that will help us attain a little bit of depth. The other thing with these poly leaders, they come in all sorts of sink rates. You can get them at 1.5 inches per second, two inches, three inches, etc. On here also, having put the, the poly leader on, I've got this uh, fluorocarbon leader. Now fluorocarbon very simply reflects less light than a lot of the other old style lines. So I've got a fluorocarbon leader and then just a couple of flies as well. Now if you're a beginner, you might be quite happy just to fish with one and that can be a good thing uh, to, to do. You don't want to complicate things. There's damsels around. These are the adults that we've been seeing. Down there are going to be the nymphs. The trout absolutely love the nymphs. The adults can be a little bit difficult for them to consume and chase around and use a lot of energy. So we're going to fish with this little damsel nymph on our poly leader out there, add a little bit of depth around this weed bed and see what we can find. Bird line out there. Straighten it up. And then I, I simply count. One, two, three, four, down to 10, down to 20. I'm gonna try a 20 count on this, just while I'm talking. So I've got to about 10, and I'm letting it go down, letting it go down. It's pulling my leader. Remember, this is a poly leader at the end. The main leader is the, the fluorocarbon at the very end of that, with a couple of flies on, and it's just pulling it all down, hopefully, to the fish. And I'm not casting very far. It's something that, especially when you're starting off, people do incorrectly in, in my opinion is they're always trying to reach for the other bank now here we've got this great moving casting platform the boat and so we can come out find features like i've got a little weed bed around here uh, there's a few boys and things as well in the close vicinity and i can use that to position myself throw the fly line out and actually get down to, to my fish i don't need to be throwing it a long long way in this situation and also Fishing fairly short like that allows me to just fish in nice and slowly and maintain great control of the flies. I'm just using this. This is a figure of eight retrieve. 
and we just fish it in, fish it in, nice and slow, waiting for a take. And maybe add just a couple of little twitches because I'm fishing with a damsel nymph. There's loads of adults around, so they hatch from this thing called a damsel nymph. And they sort of are around the weed beds that we're fishing and they sort of twitch and fairly wriggle to be fair. And so by figure of eighting and then adding that little twitch in, I'm mimicking the natural. I'm hoping that at some point a trout's gonna happen upon it. Like that one, right there. There we go. Just came flying in and actually hit that then. Now, as I said, I wasn't casting very far at all then. Not very far at all. It's an important thing to, to actually learn when you're a beginner. Don't try and reach for the horizon. Instead, that was just a nice short cast, slow retrieve. And we've got our first trout of the day. Even on a bright sunny day like this, a lot of the textbooks will tell you that you're not gonna catch many trout. But actually, if you get out there, get your fly in the water, you might just, I'm not actually even gonna net this fish, I'm just gonna bring it to the edge and flip the fly out. People think that barbless hooks kind of come out easily, but actually, if you keep the tension on the fish, play it in nice and quickly, there you are, see it just pops out. And then, at any time of the year, always make sure that your fish is well revived, but especially if it is the summertime. There she goes. Fantastic. So having caught a fish, I thought what I'd do is stop for a little while and just show you how you connect a poly leader and in the first place what a poly leader actually is. So these are poly leaders, I've got a couple just here. They're kind of like pieces of fly line, really. Um, as we learned in the first and second episodes, fly lines have like a, a, a core and then PVC that's bonded to the, uh, to the core. And poly leaders are just a short section of fly line. Um, this particular one sinks at 2.6 in, inches per second. This one at three inches per second. Both, both of them are seven feet long. And the idea is, and this is great if you're a beginner and a novice, and of course these videos are kind of aimed right at you, is you can turn your floater into a sink tip. All you need to do is add one of these to the end. And I'm just gonna show you how. So first things first, you can end up in a horrible tangle if you don't unwind them correctly. So, I'm taking it out of its little packet there. I'm gonna show you how. The way that I do this is I stick some fingers in, inside there, jam the poly leader kind of open, and then all I've gotta do is start with the welded end that looks like this. This is the bit that's gonna be attached to the fly line. And I very carefully unwind it. So you see my fingers are still trapping it. And there we are, then it undoes. So there we are, that's our poly leader all ready to go. Attaching it to the fly line is dead simple, but there is a right and a wrong way to do it. Fly line, we've got our loop on the end there, and then our poly leader loop. Pass the fly line through the poly leader, first of all. So it goes through the loop of the poly leader. Then grab hold of the poly leader, I kind of double it up. You don't have to go all the way to the other end and I just double it up and I thread it back through the fly line. So we've got fly line through poly leader, poly leader through fly line. Like so, now if this is all working correctly, as we see when we pull it down, it all neatly comes together and you get this lovely direct connection. That's the right way to attach your poly leader. You've got seven feet now of sinking line on the end of your floater. You're gonna be able to get down some depths. Remember just to count it down. Of course, you will need to add a, a leader to the end here. Um, lots of ways of doing that. You could end up with these things called droppers and extra flies. If you're a beginner, if you're out on a hot day like this and you just, you know that you need to get a little bit of depth, just fish, maybe a 10 foot leader, uh, one fly, um, just to make things dead simple, and then go looking for likely areas, weed beds, good features, um, and with a little bit of luck, even on a very hot day like this, you might encounter a fish. Let's go and try again. The 
poly leaders have worked really well. I've picked up a few fish, but it started to kind of slow down. And, uh, and I think the fish have gone even deeper. I certainly noticed that with the poly leader, I was having to count it down longer and longer to get takes. So in this situation, and if you've had a little bit of practice with casting, a good idea to have within your fishing bag is one of these. Now this is a really useful fly line. It's called an intermediate. And what that means is that it just sinks very, very slowly. Intermediate does not mean that it will sink to a certain depth say five, six feet and just stay there, it will carry on, but it, it sinks nice and slow. That's the important thing to know about them. This one's a, a Rio Aqualux. Um, it's a, a clear line, really, really nice line to cast. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna help me get a little bit deeper now, um, down where I think those fish are, quicker. And, uh, and of course, the quicker that I get there, the greater opportunity of catching a few fish through the day. Let's get it out there, have a go, see what happens. So I've come back to this spot uh, that I, I was catching on with a poly leader earlier on. Uh, it's, it's right next to a weed bed and the poly leader, I was, like I say, I was having to sort of leave it and leave it to get down and then pretty much within the first sort of couple of pulls I'd get a fish on. So based on that I want to get there that little bit quicker. It's not massively deep out in front of me here, probably somewhere in the region of seven, eight feet or so. And so what I've done, I've swapped over to this intermediate line. And what this will do is something really important. The, the poly leader, when I'm casting it out, the tip of the floating line is kind of getting pulled down and pulled down and pulled down like this. And then when I fish it, it does come up in this quite enticing sort of arc, lifting up through. But the trouble with that is you're always bringing your flies up and if you fish them a little quicker, they'll come up faster and faster and faster. This intermediate is kind of going down more like this. So it's just going down my arm, sort of being the line, it's just going down like so. And what it's gonna mean is that when I fish it, when I've counted it down, I'm fishing it through those fish, through those fish, through those fish, before eventually coming up through. So pretty simply, the idea behind an intermediate and really any sinking line is to get down to the fish, find the depth faster, and, uh, and then keep the fly there for as long as possible. I'm actually using exactly the same flies um, that's another thing that I think is quite important. You don't necessarily have to go and strip the whole leader off and chuck a load of bright colourful lures on or anything like that. Find yourself a feature like these weed beds, you can't sort of necessarily see them other than perhaps a few little bits that are floating on the surface. But just out there is a weed bed and that's what I'm, I'm fishing towards. Let's try another cast. Just the same as with the poly leader, I'm not throwing a long, long way. Oh yes! On the intermediate. Excellent. Twitching it back. Good slam intake. And we've got a nice summer trout on. So it's quiet here today. Not, not anybody fishing very much and it is steaming hot, but it just goes to show you that if you go down, you find the right depth, you'll catch yourself some fish. Nice day out in the sun. There we are, look. It's a damsel, firmly wedged right in the side of its mouth. Played out, we're gonna keep the fish, keep them wet. Oh, there we are, look. Barbless hook. It's flipped itself off already and gone. Fantastic, so that's the intermediate. It's just basically a slow sinking fly line. Think of it like that, a nice slow sinking fly line. Ideal for small still waters where you've got weed beds like this, eight to 10 feet of depth out there. And uh, yeah, fishing the damsels, it's, um, it's really done well for us today. Still loads of naturals out there. I've been fishing with the nymph. I haven't seen the fish. They won't, they won't chase the naturals around very much, the, uh, the adult flies. Um, it's too much effort for them. So instead, I've been fishing down deeper, first with poly leaders, then with this intermediate. We've had a good few fish. And uh, I think, to be absolutely honest, I'm gonna go and take a break and uh, get out of the sun, get in a bit of shade with a nice cold beer. So I'm back on dry land. 
Thank you very much for joining me on this uh, third episode. And uh, it's been one of the hottest days of the year by far. And yet we, we've managed to catch some fish. Um, just to recap those tactics, first of all, taking the floaters from episode one and two, uh, we attached a poly leader, seven foot poly leader. Remember, it's just like a sinking tip that you add to a floating line to help control your depth. And on that, just a very basic leader and then some damsel nymphs because today there's been so many of the natural damsels around. Later on in the day, those fish really went down and it's hardly surprising, massive blue sky, beating down sun, it's been incredibly hot. And so I swapped to the intermediate and this is the important bit with exactly the same flies, didn't change the fly setup, was confident in that, but I just used the intermediate to get deeper. I need to go off and find myself a nice cold drink. I hope the next time you'll join me for episode four of these beginner's guides where we're going to go a little bit deeper and we're also going to go a little bit bigger and leave the small water, head to a reservoir and see what we can find. Thank you very much for joining me.